The Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. A teenage boy had just passed his driving test and inquired of his father as to when he, they could discuss together the use of the car. His father said he'd make a deal with the son. You bring your grades up from a C to a B, average, study your Bible a little, and get your hair cut, and then we'll talk about the car. And the boy thought for about that for just a minute and decided he'd settle on the offer. And they agreed on it. After about six weeks, his father said, Son, you've brought your grades up, and I've observed that you have been studying your Bible, but I am disappointed you haven't had your hair cut. And the boy said, You know, Dad, I've been thinking about that, and... I've noticed in my studies of the Bible that Samson had long hair. John the Baptist had long hair. Moses had long hair. And there is even strong evidence that Jesus had long hair. And the father said, And did you also notice they all walked everywhere they went? This joke reminds me of when I was young and would ask my father to use the car. And as I would plead my case for using the car, I was often reminded that driving is a, not a right. Driving is a privilege and not a right. Now framing my understanding that driving uh, as a privilege, framing that as a privilege makes me a better driver. It's when I start to believe that driving is only a right, that I become dissatisfied with all the other drivers on the street. There are many different ways we can receive various things in our life, like driving a car. Some things are received as a right. Some things received as a privilege. Some things are received as a reward. And some things as a gift. Today's Gospel text is about the resurrected Christ appearing to the disciples, telling them they are being sent, and before sending them, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the reason for the festival day we are celebrating today. This Pentecost Sunday is about the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the gift that really, truly keeps on giving. As we consider our second reading from today, from 1 Corinthians, we are made aware of the Spirit's gifts. The text says, Now, these, uh, now there are ver varieties of gifts. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 
To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of the spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And these gifts are given to us. And it would be easy to think too much about who has gotten what gift or why the gift seems more prevalent in one person compared to another. Instead, I would like to ask a question. And that is, what does it mean to receive these gifts? What does it mean to receive truly any gift? I have a good friend that asks his children if they think they deserve presents at Christmas or on their birthday. He asks them, do you deserve a present this year? And of course, their answer is, yes, yes. I deserve five gifts, Daddy. I deserve ten gifts. I deserve a hundred gifts. Then he reminds them, you know, you really don't deserve any gifts. And before you might think he is a bad parent, he adds this. He says to them, if you deserved what you have received, it is no longer a gift. It's a reward. If you deserved what you have received, it is no longer a gift. It's a reward. We do not deserve the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are a free gift from God. By the life, death, and resurrection of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, the gifts of the Spirit are received by God's people. And it is important that expectation is left out of our understanding of gift. There is no expectation in the giving and receiving of a true gift. Many years ago, my wife and I were having a conversation about the nature of gifts and of gift giving. She had mentioned that she had sent a present to a relative of ours and that the relative had still not sent back a thank you card or a note or a phone call or something that acknowledged that gift. She reminded me that she had spent time looking for purchasing wrapping and sending that gift. And I said to her, so, it really wasn't a gift that you gave them. And she said, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> so delicately, I suggested, well, it sounds like you had a condition uh, attached to that gift, an expectation. You know, it's not really a gift, if you expect something in return for the gift. We talked a long time about what a gift is. Now don't get me wrong. I believe thank you notes are a wonderful way to tell someone that the gift they have given you has touched you in a very special way. But if we are giving to each other and automatically expecting something in return, the gifting begins to fade and rewarding begins to happen. So how do we thank God for the gifts that we have received? The gifts of the Spirit, the gift of God's only Son, Jesus. And how do, you, how do, you, how do we understand the difference between gift and reward? Well, certainly, we agree as God's people that it is right to give God thanks and praise. We say that often when we worship together. And thanks and praise to God are always appropriate. When they are given without believing they are an obligation. But let me ask you this. When is it that you believe a gift you have given has been truly received? Is it when you see it at the person's house that you gave it to and it's sitting where everyone can see it? 
Or maybe is it when you see the gift being well taken care of, it hasn't got any scratches or marks on it? Or is it when you see the person who was given that gift really using that gift, sharing it with others, using that gift to help others? And why wouldn't we believe that God might see that the same way? The gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us to be shared with others, to help others, and to help bring God's reality into our world. And so we pray. Abundant and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please help us to use our gifts and all that you have given us to be your people who are helping those in need. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.